Welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be doing my July harvest. It's a really exciting time on the allotment because there's lots and lots of things that I can pick and almost pick. So I'm going to be showing you what I'm picking and what I um, have to leave for a little bit longer. Now the rhubarb is something I've been picking for quite some time now. Um, this is really easy to pick. Um, just pull and twist. Don't snap it off as she says as she snaps one off. So you basically pull and twist. So you take off the whole bottom. There we go, that's a better. So when you pull rhubarb, you make sure you take the whole piece out like that so you don't break it off. Fortunately, I've had a few bits that have broken off so now I'm gonna have to get them out. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, you pull it and you take the whole bottom with you and you know you've got it because you get the little bit like that. So I'm pulling some today because my mum really loves it. If I'm honest, I've had quite a lot. After you pull rhubarb, I normally always chuck a watering can of water over it. Um, my dad always told me to do that, you know, so that it gives you more. Um, as we move down, I've been picking my raspberries. They are in abundance at the moment. I've been eating lots and lots of raspberries, as you can imagine. There's lots of things you can do with raspberries. And they are incredibly nutrient dense and very, very good for you indeed. So they've got lots of omega-3 in them. So I've got quite a good punnet full there. I come up here every few, few days to pick them and we absolutely love them. I'm gonna make a tray bake when I get home. I try and vary what I do with it because the temptation is just to make lots of gin and lots of jam and that's really, really lovely, but you can have too much of a good thing. So I put them in smoothies, I have them on my porridge, um, I just have them as they are with some ice cream. And like I said, I'm gonna make a tray bake when I get home. Now, if you Google it, there's lots and lots of different options. I will freeze some and I will undoubtedly make some jam and gin, but I'm gonna try and mix it up a little bit. Apart from anything else, they are incredibly good for you. So well worth making the effort to eat quite a few yourselves while they're in season. So a few more there. Like I say, I'll be up here every few days to pick a few more. There's a lovely punnet of raspberries there. I've started picking some of my gooseberries already today. I've got two types. I've got just the white ones and the ones that, that turn colour. You can pick these earlier if you want to, but if you leave them on a little bit longer, they are a little bit sweeter. It's, it's completely up to you. They are a labour of love. That's why I'm putting gloves on. They are incredibly prickly and there is no easy way of picking them. At first, when you start picking them, it seems almost impossible. Um, to do them because as you can see look there's some really really big thistles on them that and at first you think it's going to take me forever but you kind of get you kind of go from underneath and if you have a pair of gloves on it's not too bad and um, like I say it is a little bit of a labour of love but then again gardening is a little bit that way um, but it's not too bad once you get into a rhythm of picking the gooseberries off of a thorny bush you don't get pricked quite as much as you think you would, but definitely worth having a decent pair of gloves on. And I kind of go from underneath and um, pull down um, and lift everything up. It's really easy, um, a bit like raspberries. You think you've picked them all, and then when you start pulling them apart, there's actually quite a lot more underneath. I'll come back to these, because these are gonna take me quite a while to get off. Um, but there's plenty of gooseberries there. Um, my top tip is elderflower cordial. So if you've not made your own elderflower cordial, like I do every year, just buy a good elderflower cordial and a couple of tablespoons in it when you cook it. It's absolutely delightful and by far my favourite way of eating gooseberries. But of course you can do jams and chutneys with them as well. So obviously the leeks are nowhere near ready. And um, the onions I put in in March have still got a little bit longer. These ones I can dig, these are the overwintering ones. They're not brilliant, but I have been digging a few and just taking them home. So these, um, I'll need a fork and I will dig these up today as well. So that's a job I will come back and do later. Now this is the really exciting bit. I haven't dug my potatoes yet, so your guess is as good as mine, how good they're gonna be. This is Charlotte. So this is a really lovely um, new potato, one of my fa personal favorites. Now when you dig potatoes, you're gonna stick your fork through the odd one, but try not to. So you kind of like dig away from the main um, plant. If I'm honest, my cameraman, my husband's much better at digging potatoes than me. I seem to stick the fork through lots and lots of them. But we'll do the best we can and see what we've got here. 
with new potatoes, I generally dig what I need when I need it. So I'm not going to dig all of them. Like I say, I will dig what I need when I need it. And there we go. That's a lovely one there. So that we're, we're having um, organic chicken tonight and that will go absolutely fantastic with it. So some of the things I'm digging today, I'm actually going to be eating. Um, so the raspberries, I'm going to make a tray bake with. And the rhubarb I will give to my mum as a gift. Isn't she lucky? So even though these are new potatoes, gosh, they're actually really big. I can't believe it. I could have probably had these earlier. This is fantastic. So like I say, try and dig away from where, where the main plant is. Oh, there we go. So there's only four of us eating this evening. So I am literally just going to dig one plant, roughly what I need. I think that's one plant. There we go. That is pretty cold for one plant, I think, and I think there's probably still more in there, which I will need to dig around and make sure I get them all out. We don't want to waste any, do we? Oh, wow. Gosh. This is amazing for one plant. I do wonder whether there might be two here, and I've dug more than one, but I do think I've only dug one, because that's, where, that's, that's my first, that's the, the line to say where I put my first row. So that is pretty, pretty awesome. That's a bit of mud, a little potato. There we go. We might be venturing into another another potato there, so we'll leave that. That will do. I can dig that over a little bit more when I need some more, but that's gonna keep me going for a few days, isn't it? I think you'll all agree that's pretty amazing. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. So obviously these will go on the um, composter before I leave. So if we move up and I need to do some cut some lettuce as well. My lettuce has gone absolutely bonkers I think I said to you before I wouldn't normally have it covered but my potatoes are encroaching over and my concern is if I took this off they would just flop over and they would ruin um, my row of carrots underneath so I've left this on there almost like a protective um, barrier now I pretty much harvested most of this row about a week ago and this has come cut and come again lettuces I can't recommend it enough it's by far the best way to grow lettuce and although you will need to successional sow, which I've done. I've got another row in ready because it will start to bolt. It means you don't have to wait for it to heart. So it means you can keep coming and pick a bit, pick as much or as little as you like. Or like me, I've been picking it and giving it away to friends and family because I've literally got so much. You know, some people say it with flowers. I say it with a bag full of lettuce when I go and see somebody, which I still seem to be quite happy about. So I'm gonna cut a nice big chunk off here again. I don't suppose my mother will complain too much if I give her some lettuce to take home today after she's had dinner with us. So there we are, there's a nice big bunch and the beauty with that is I've cut it and it will all come back, um, which is absolutely awesome. When you take your lettuce home, plunge it straight into cold water, otherwise it will wilt. And then I have a salad spinner. If you've not got a salad spinner, it's well worth the investment. And then once it's been spun, I then store it in the fridge and it will keep for quite a few days. I've also had people asking about radishes. Um, wash them and then put them in a cup or a bowl covered in cold water and keep them in the fridge. So that's a top tip for you if you need it and you're harvesting radishes, which I have, but they're at home, so I won't be doing that today. So as we move over, I've got my squashes here. They're not ready yet. I've got my runner beans, but they're not ready to harvest. I've got some lovely flowers. Um, now, if you've got dahlias or you pick any kinds of flowers up at the allotment, it's worth to bring in something with you to put them in, otherwise they will wilt, especially dahlias. So I've got an old olive jar and also a coffee jar and I filled it with water and I'll, I'll carry them back. So if you're bringing the car, maybe worth bringing someone with you if you're harvesting flowers. Or if, you, if you're like me, um, I'll be walking back, then obviously I can easily hold them. So. So you just cut the stems and just pop them in the jars like that. So even the ones that are a little bit over, cut them all because you want to encourage more flowers. Again, this is such a lovely thing to do. We've only been growing flowers for a few years now um, for cut flowers for the house, but it is well worth it. It saves you a lot of money if you like having flowers in your in your um, 
house. It's really good, obviously, for pollination, for bees and all that kind of thing. Um, and it's nice to, to give to people as gifts as well when they come round. It's, nothing, you know, it's always lovely to give someone a tree if they're having a bad day or, or just to be nice. Um, I quite like the idea of having a really good supply of flowers. Now, unfortunately, some of the stems aren't long enough. I'm probably not an expert growing flowers, but I do have some smaller vases that I put the different size ones in. So, I had some little bottles of cream the other day, and it's worth saving little jars and bottles for flowers. Um, so you can have lots of um, pots of flowers all around the house. So, got quite a lot here today, actually. I think I'll come back and pick the rest of those later. Otherwise, the film will be full up of me picking flowers, but I'll pick all the rest of these before I leave. Pop them in there. Like so. And as we move up, the courgettes are a little bit slow to the party. Um, but these little round ones, you pick them when they're about golf ball size, so that one's all right, and you just kind of twist them like that. Easy as that. So, so they're all right. But every all the others, I've got some on here, as you can see, but they're really not. And I could have that one off. In fact, I might do. So, look, if they're finger size, they can come off. I can have that with some egg on toast. Come on, I've got one ripe tomato at home, so I could have that with it. So. As we move up, I have got lots and lots of lovely chard, but I don't need any of any for what I'm doing at the moment. But if you don't grow bright lights chard, that's well worth doing. Something I am going to take a nice, generous amount of is some lovely kale. And one of my favourite things, we love it, and crispy kale. If you've never done crispy kale before, give it a go. It's absolutely amazing. We love it. So, which is probably why we grow so much because we have a lot of crispy kale so and when you pick your kale this is where it's growing from the top so you take the leaves from the bottom and again this is really good because it's cut and come again and um, if you've got kale or you're thinking of growing kale we get really bad white fly here and also we suffer from the butterflies now having a piece of environ mesh like this is well worth the investment because your kale is it wouldn't say it's perfect but as you can see the underneath of the leaves you get a little bit of white fly but not much at all you know you're going to get a little bit you're never going to keep it all out unless you start spraying stuff and i don't want to do that um but if you get a bit of enviro mesh it seems expensive when you buy it but once you buy it i've never thrown a bit away yet because it's so incredibly durable i will put a link in the description if you want to get some of that because I do really rate that and I wouldn't I wouldn't be without it. I think before we used EnviroMesh on our kale, I used to find it hard to persuade the family to eat the kale because it was really hard work really scrubbing it and getting all the all the white fly off. But now we do this, it makes for a much more enjoyable um, meal without the protein. So let's cover that back up because like I say we don't want those butterflies getting in there. So what I generally do, I could just pick off each one individually, but because I've got so many, I virtually clear, obviously I don't clear it completely, I'll leave a few at the top because it will keep growing up. And I'm actually going to have to rise, raise this up a little bit. As you can see, they're starting to touch the top already. So these canes are quite long, so I am going to have to lift this up a little bit. Um, but you, you leave some growth in the middle when you pick your kale um, and you just take the bottom leaves. So in the next few days, I'm going to have to sort this out. Because if, if I don't, the leaves will get distorted on the top. Um, but that's an easy enough job to do. We can, we can do that. Um, so already I'm starting to wonder whether walking up here was such a good idea. Because I have such a lot in my basket already. One thing I would say, if, when you've got an allotment, I've got my basket. But I always have some emergency bags in, the, um, in my summer house as well. So if you get up here... And you end up picking a lot more than you thought you would you know save old carrier bags or other eco bags or whatever you've got so you've got plenty of things to bring your produce back in same with like your raspberries and your black currants i always save lots of containers and i bring it up here because you you can never have too many and um, that's a definite top tip and over here now i haven't looked at this already i have got a piece of broccoli which I'm going to have for our dinner tonight which I'm quite excited about. I've got lots of um, broccoli heads forming. Um, I cover this 
I could cover this with EnviroMesh, but like I say, it does cost quite a lot. So I get this other green scaffolding net and I just double net it. And that does what I need it to do with something like this. I'm not so bothered about whitefly. I'm more bothered about butterflies when it comes to broccoli. But I've got a lovely head of um, broccoli there. Can you see that? Which is absolutely fantastic. And I've got quite a lot of other ones coming as well. So they're just not ready to pull yet. It's not easy to tell, if I'm honest, when these are ready. But as they start to grow up a little bit more, if you leave them too long, they'll flower and then they'll grow to seed and they won't be any good. So I am going to have this one off. And plus the fact it's good to start um, doing some of them a little bit earlier because what you'll find is everything will come at once and then you won't be able to eat it quick enough. So sometimes you have to accept that you have to pick the odd thing a little bit when it's not quite as big as it could be, otherwise you won't get through it. And it's broccoli isn't probably the easiest thing, if I'm honest, to, to grow. So I'm really chuffed that all this is coming on so incredibly well. So the harvest is finished for me today. My black currants are not quite ready. I'm going to give them a mention because black currants are a funny thing. For me, it's a bit like the man from Del Monte. He says yes. I pick my black currants. I taste them to see whether they're ripe enough. It's a real... Um, balance if you like them really sour you can pick them a little bit earlier I like mine when they're quite black currency to be honest um, and they're it, it, it's a real balance between them almost dropping off and being ripe enough so you have to strike the balance that's right for you but obviously once most of them are dark as you can see they are starting to but they're not quite ready look there's still quite a lot of ones that aren't dark enough but I don't think it'll be that long it is vital that you cover things like your black currants um, with something and I will put a link in the description for this because this, again it's a very cheap way of covering your crops and um, much cheaper than some of the other netting you can get we buy it on a big roll and we use it year after year and it's absolutely fantastic and because the birds have virtually cleared me out last year um, I only had a few left which was really upsetting um, so yeah I will probably take a look at them in a week's time I will try them and if literally if they taste quite black currency eh, I pick them and then I can start eating them freezing them jamming in them uh, and, and whatever um, but it's up to you if you like them a little bit more sour you can pick them a little bit earlier but I like a nice black currency taste now I hope you've enjoyed my harvest I'd love to know what you're harvesting if you've got any questions or queries then as ever please don't hesitate to ask <laughs>